Okay, don't don't worry about me. I'm I'm using the runway, but that that's okay. We'll uh, we'll wait for you guys then. Right guys, welcome to the Mission Planner. Here we are in the middle of the ocean. We are off the coast of Guam and we will be navigating using the Yak-52, the Antonio International Airport. Why are we doing this? One of you asked a really important question and that is how do you actually navigate using the Yak-52? So today I'm going to show you how to do that. First thing we're gonna need to do is, let's have a look at our aircraft. So we have the Yak-52. We need to modify the radio systems for this aircraft. So let's go back to the map. We are going to have a look at the International Airport and what navigation aids this particular airport has. Now you'll see it's got these nice, cool white triangles coming off um, of the airport. Those are the ILS, Instrument Landing System. We don't have the radio ability in the Yak-52 to actually use that. But what we do have is this little device down here. Now, this one over here is called a TACAN. Um, that runs on megahertz. We only have an AM or Amplitude Modulation radio which works in kilohertz and as you can see down here this is 385 decimal zero zero kilohertz alpha juliet alpha and we're going to program this particular navigation aid into our yak 52 okay so before you actually take off or actually start the mission you want to click on your aircraft here you want to go over to the radio tab in the radio tab you will see that you have channel one an outer and inner channel 2, channel 3, channel 4, all with outer and inners. Now, the reason there is two sections for channel 1, in, in other words, an outer and inner, if there was another one in line, so let's say there was another one over here, we could set that as our outer one, and we would track to the outer one first, then we would track to the inner one, and that way we know if we're in a straight line going to the airport. But this one only has one NDB. I've set both the inner and outer to the same frequency just so that if we flick the switch by accident, we don't actually change our ADF in the aircraft. And I'll show you how that works. We've made sure that our aircraft um, is set up. We've got full fuel. We don't need any smoke for this mission. And we're gonna take this Yak-52 and we're gonna do some navigating with it. So I will see you in the airplane. Right guys, welcome to the Yak-52. So you'll see here we're flying around in this sort of open area here. The clouds haven't quite um, taken over this area yet, but it is a rainy day. It is foggy, it is misty, um, not very good for navigating, and so it's the perfect day to learn how to use um, the NDB, or the non-directional beacon, which we use by navigating on our ADF, or our automatic direction finder. Earlier, we set up the radio frequencies, and that is down here on our right-hand side. So as you can see down here, we've got channel one, two, three, four, and five. We set up channel one, and if we have a look on our HSI, you'll see that we have this needle over here that needle is showing us where the ndb is or it's pointing towards the ndb if i flick it over to channel two which we haven't set up you'll see that it points straight ahead and no matter which way i turn the needle stays in the same place okay so that is obviously not tracking any ndb so we'll set it back to channel one and we'll see that that needle points off to the right hand side there and as we turn around the needle is just pointing towards the non-directional beacon that entire time now the other thing we want to do is we want to set our runway heading on the hsi so as you can see over here we've got this double lined arrow i can use the little dial here to change our double arrow which is our hsi course indicator and we're gonna set that on to 060. So that's over there. Now that is our runway heading. And so because that's all set up now, we know where the runway is or which way it's pointing or which way to fly towards it once we are overhead the beacon. But the other thing we need to do is make sure that we're not too close to the beacon before we actually turn into the runway. Otherwise we're not gonna have enough time to descend and land. So what we're gonna do today is we're going to head over to the beacon through this rubbish weather 
and we're actually going to turn away from the runway. We're going to fly out from the runway until we get to the edge of the island. And it just so happens that the weather forecast for the airport at the other end of the island, um, they have scattered clouds. So in other words, um, much better visibility. So we're going to fly out towards them. We're then going to rejoin onto the um, radial that takes us to the runway. And then we will fly to the runway um, and we will descend down to 800 meters um, until we're overhead the beacon and then do a nice gradual descent because we still have view of the we'll still have a view of the ground at that point um, and then we will hopefully pick up the runway through the fog and we'll be able to land so we want to get onto the NDB so as I fly into the clouds here the needle is pointing straight ahead which means we're flying directly towards the NDB I'm flying using the artificial horizon and as you can see even if I'm right in close I can just use the wings of the artificial horizon to maintain level you can see our little needle down at the bottom there is slowly moving off to the right hand side so we'll just fly towards it again slowly bring it over and carry on right if you look outside the visibility is pretty bad that's okay we're tracking directly towards the NDB we're at 1,000 meters we're not going to go any lower than this because we know that the terrain around here is around 800 meters high now we are getting bumped around by the wind a bit and so very important that we continue tracking towards our beacon and we maintain our altitude now you'll see that as you start getting closer to the beacon you can see some of the terrain popping out here through the fog as we get closer to the beacon the needle will get more and more sensitive and because we don't know how far we are away from the beacon um, we just have to continue to fly as best we can with the needle straight ahead of us until we actually get to the NDB at which point the needle will go a bit crazy and it'll flip around and then we know we've flown overhead the beacon there we go the needle just flipped over and we are going to turn to the left towards the back of the double needle which is flying away from the runway but on the runway heading and we're going to fly out towards the end of the island now all I'm doing here is I'm just flying slightly left of the runway heading because what I want to do is I want to bring that needle back into the center of those two needles which means that I'm actually flying in line with the runway and flying away from the runway there we go and now we'll turn back onto our heading which is the reciprocal of the runway or in other words flying away from the runway now you'll notice that the balance ball is slightly out to the right i am trying my best to correct it but this is my one pet peeve with this particular module is that there is no way to set the trim for the rudder to get that ball in the middle during straight and level flight and i've tried to in the special menu within the game before loading up and the trim just doesn't work and neither does the elevator trim both are which um, are extremely helpful when flying on instruments but I hope that the developers fix this soon because this is an absolutely amazing mod um, and if you haven't watched my previous video I'll um, put a little thing up there for you and you can have a look at the last video I made which is comparing this one to a real Yak-52 so down there you can see the other runway um, they said they had scattered clouds. It looks um, more broken to me, but definitely much better visibility here. And so we're at a thousand meters and we're at the end of the island. So what we'll do is we will just do a bell turn. And so what, how we do that is we basically just turn away from our track by 45 degrees. If you can't work out 45 degrees, basically take your outbound of 240 and add 45 and you get 285 and that's what you want to fly away from your track for and we're going to do that for one minute now we have a clock down here 
and so we started at the 30 second mark so we'll just continue flying until we get back down to 30 seconds now whenever you're doing instrument flying you want to do what's called a rate one turn so we're currently flying at 250 kilometers an hour which is about 140 knots so if you take 10 percent of your knot speed which is 14 plus 7 we get 21 so if we turn in at 21 degrees which is basically between the second uh, correction between the uh, first and second line that says 30 on our artificial horizon that's roughly 25 degrees or so and um, that'll be good enough for a rate one turn so here we go rate one turn now we're still maintaining our altitude of 1000 meters and you can see at uh, the bottom of the artificial horizon is between the 30 and the first mark there which indicates that we're doing our rate one turn. Now we're going to do a rate one turn until the needle and our course needle are both on each other. So in other words we're flying to the runway on the radial from the beacon as well. So the beacon radial we're flying to the runway on is going to be 060 once we fly over it. And we're landing on runway 060 because it is pointing towards the uh, compass heading of 060. And so you can see we're approaching our, our heading and both the NDB needle and the runway needle or our course heading are both pretty much centered which is fantastic. Means we did a nice rate one turn and we are now flying basically straight at the runway from this side of the island. Still at 1000 meters. Now we know that we're going to be flying on the southwestern side of the island which has much lower terrain and so we'll start descending down to 800 meters once we get over this harbor area over here just over the front of our nose now here's a good question what happens if our needle goes offset like currently the needle is off to the right hand side well what you want to do is you put your plane on the other side of the needle and you're going to push the needle back to the center so we will roll past the needle as you can see we're going past the needle now and we will roll level and we will just wait until that needle goes back towards the middle there it is and we will come back. Beauty. All right, we're gonna reduce our power setting. We'll go down to uh, 600 millimeters of mercury. Okay, we're gonna slowly descend down to our 800 meters. Pretty rubbish weather today. We'll get ourselves nice and straight and aligned again. We want that needle back in the center. Coming up to our 800 meters, we'll increase our power again and we'll maintain our height and we will get on to our course beautiful you can see it's flicking around a bit that's just because the needle is quite sensitive we're very close to the beacon and as we fly over the beacon I'm going to try and show you out the window what the beacon looks like so I'm going to let it go out to the left a little bit here and there it is down there that is the beacon so from that point, we're very close, so it's not really going to make much of a difference having turned off of it slightly. We're going to start slowing down, and we're going to start descending down to 500 meters. We're going to make sure we maintain that runway heading. Slowing her down, we want to put our gear out. There it is. And there you can see the little running white rabbits that we call them, the little lights that are running inbound onto the runway. And you can see that that NDB has taken us in the middle of the two runways. So we can decide which one we're gonna to go to. We're gonna go for the right hand side one. So we've got three greens. We'll slow down a bit more. There we go, we're now on the right hand runway. Slow down a bit more below 170. Flaps up. There it is, she's going to pitch up, we will lower the nose. Okay, this would be a nice time to use trim. But there you go, you can see the running rabbit, or the white lead-in lights. Taking us onto runway 06 right. You can see some helicopters training over there. Still not a very good day, but because of that lighting system and because of our navigation, we have now arrived 
nice and safely at a runway. So three greens. Our uh, flaps are down. We will go full fine on our pitch. Cow flaps are open. In case we need to do a go around. And we're gonna land a bit longer because the taxiway is a bit further down. 160 kilometers an hour, that's fine. All the way down, slowly reduce the power. Hold her off, hold her off, hold her off, hold her off, hold her off. On the back wheels. Nice. We'll apply the brakes, nice and easy. And here comes our taxi way over here. And as you can see, if I just stop here on the runway before I actually turn in down this taxiway. If you look on our automatic direction finder, I've set the course of 060, which is our runway, the two lines. And pointing backwards is the arrow pointing towards the NDB and you can see it's straight down the runway. So that's how it took us to the runway. Oh cool, we've got F-18s over there. Oh, okay, don't, don't worry about me. I'm, I'm using the runway, but that, that's okay. We'll, uh, we'll wait for you guys then. Goodness, jet pilots, they think they own the airport. We don't want to get too close to them and get blown away by their um, jet wash. Man, what a crappy day. We'll head over to the right hand side here. Fantastic, we'll put the park brake on. You run your up. And shut it down. Right guys, as this last f18 is taxing past i hope that you have enjoyed this video if you have please consider leaving a like down below sub to the channel if you are new and you would like to see more content like this and leave a comment down below what you would like to see me do next in dcs we have jets that we can fly um, we have some more prop powered aircraft uh, we could do some warbirds um, there's a whole plethora of stuff that we could do and uh, I'd like to know what you would like to see. So until the next time, guys, um, I hope you have a fantastic day onwards and upwards.